Can I'm about to my voice. Police, I don't know. This house is big. I don't know where my little cousin at. So can you please? Where is the three month old baby? Crazy, know, the, the baby lady. The baby is on my mama kitchen counter <laughs> with his head smashed. Now, I what? Ba the baby lady, the baby is on my mama kitchen counter with his head smashed. Now I need you to please send me. Okay, is it a male or a female? Know where my little cousin is at. Now if I do a girl pop up with a weapon, I'm not gonna have a little cousin no more. So can you please? Just, I know, I know the car car. Can you please just send the police? As disturbing as this find was, there was something even more terrifying lurking nearby. The killer was hiding somewhere in the house. Look, is the baby breathing? Listen, lady, the baby is deceased. Okay, okay. Is, All right, we're sending the police oh, and an ambulance, okay? Uh, mama. What is her name, sir? Mama. Oh, oh, what is your name? I'm Robert Stewart. God damn, bro, you can hear in the back, bro. I wouldn't even know what to do in this situation, dog. Oh, man, I feel so 20 year old DeAsia Watkins and her boyfriend James Brown welcomed their healthy baby girl, Janiah Watkins, on December 4th, 2014. At first, everything seemed to be going well for the couple. DeAsia was excited to become a mother, and after a tough childhood of her own, she vowed to give her child the love she'd never received. But no one would have ever predicted the sheer horror that lay ahead. It all began when Cheviot police were dispatched to the apartment where the family was living on January 25th, 2015, around midnight. Upon hearing DeAsia's screams and baby Janiah's cries, multiple neighbors had become very concerned and placed 911 calls. Police soon arrived at the residence. However, DeAsia refused to open the door. When officers threatened to force entry into the apartment, a young man opened the door who was soon determined to be James' cousin, Chris Gully. Right away, members yeah, of law indeed, enforcement bro, detected a strong odor of marijuana and noted DeAsia's behavior seemed erratic. According to official case notes, as an officer tried to take Janiah out of DeAsia's arms in fear for the baby's safety, DeAsia allegedly attempted to choke Janiah, who was only a mere seven weeks of age. Fucking stupid. The EMTs fuck? were called to the scene to perform welfare checks on both DeAsia and Strong Jaws. What the fuck? And Janaya. They eventually managed to take Janaya, and DeAsia immediately passed out on the floor, though the cause of her having lost consciousness is unknown. She was soon moved to Deaconess Hospital for psychiatric care, where she would remain on a 72 hour investigative hold. By the following day, her diagnosis had been established. She was suffering from postpartum psychosis. In addition, marijuana was found in her system. Okay, that makes sense. Why she doesn't show the baby? I don't even know. That leave made no sense. I don't know why. That was though she denied know. using it initially. She was placed on an antipsychotic medication. Due to side effects associated with the medication, DeAsia was informed that she would have to discontinue nursing Janaya. And based on DeAsia's behavior. Staff expressed concern to the caseworker that DeAsia didn't seem to be grasping the seriousness of the situation. According to case notes, they felt that she was minimizing the incident as she described it as no big deal. <laughs> By January 30th, DeAsia had returned to the apartment and a safety plan was officially in place. She was allowed supervised contact with Janaya, provided DeAsia took her prescribed medication and that either James or his sister Jalisha was present at all times. But a visit from the caseworker reinforced the fact that DeAsia wasn't on board with the plan. She hadn't filled the prescription for her antipsychotic medication. The caseworker reiterated that it was imperative DeAsia take her medication or it wouldn't be safe for Janiah to stay in the home. James made it clear that she'd have to leave the home if she didn't comply, as the apartment lease was allegedly under his name. DeAsia reluctantly agreed. She didn't want to be separated from Janaya, and in addition, she felt she had nowhere else to go. Of course, soon these concerns would no longer be relevant, as disaster was lurking just around the corner. One week later, a caseworker completed an unannounced visit at the residence and was unable to verify if DeAsia had filled her prescription. Over the next couple of weeks, everything continued to deteriorate. By the end of February, 
the Asia had abandoned the apartment and moved in with an aunt, it was clear that the current situation wasn't working and it was about to become exponentially worse. Custody proceeds. The way, the way niggas keep foreshadowing and shit, I'm about to just get caught. What? Fuck, I lost my spots. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. All right. I'm about to get my covers. I'm, it's right behind me. I'm about to get comfortable. Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Actually mm. worse. Custody proceedings began on March 6th. As paternity had not been established and a mental health assessment needed to be completed on DeAsia, the magistrate who presided over the hearing granted custody to the Hamilton County Department of Job and Family Services. During the interim, Janaya was placed in the care of Deborah Stewart, DeAsia's aunt. Neither James nor DeAsia were allowed to see Janaya, and Deborah agreed to the terms. During the caseworker's visit to her home, she confirmed that she'd not allowed DeAsia contact with Janaya. She was adhering to the agreement, and baby Janaya was thriving. But in actuality, things weren't at all as they appeared to be, nor as Deborah claimed them to be. You see, DeAsia had been spending time with Janaya, a lot of time, actually. She'd moved into Deborah's home days earlier. Deborah was coping with her own personal issues and health problems. Caring for a baby on her own was just too much to handle. So Deborah allowed DeAsia to stay, despite the fact that she'd explicitly agreed not to allow her contact with Janaya. Three days after the caseworker's visit, a life came to a shockingly brutal end within the confines of Deborah's walls. A dispatcher received the frantic 911 call early that morning. Thanks for watching DeAsia Roberts. I can find out one more thing. Somebody please send the police. Please. What is the address? 5957 Wild West. Okay, ma'am. Who are you? Me. Ma'am, who were you just talking? You were just talking to somebody. Who were you just talking to? My son. He came over here. He found that I was asleep. Ma'am, you weren't crying when you, but I heard you talking to him. You were fine. And then when I picked up, you started crying. I need you to tell me what's going on. The dispatcher is trying to make sense of the situation, but so far, nothing is adding up, and her skepticism is evident. Oh my God, help me! Listen to me, listen to me, I need you to stop, stop crying, okay? Stop crying. Oh I, need you to help. I need you to take a deep breath and tell me what happened. All I know is my son came in here and woke me up and said, Mama, the baby's dead. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Here, talk to my son, brother. Come talk to my kid. How to my old is the baby? The baby is three months. Oh my God, I'm going to jail. Deborah passed the phone off to her son, Robert, who'd arrived at the home along with his children just minutes earlier. It was his youngest child who had arrived in the kitchen first and bore witness to the terribly gruesome scene. Robert had immediately ushered his children out of the house to safety then re-entered, desperate to locate his mother, Deborah. Hello? What happened? Police. I don't know. This house is big. I don't know where my little cousin is. So can you please... Where is the three-month-old baby? Ba the baby lady. The baby is on my mama's kitchen counter. DeAsia was nowhere to be found, and Robert feared she might have been in danger or had potentially been killed as well. Okay, we. I need to know what happened to the baby. I don't know what happened to the baby. I came into the house. She told me. Came into the house. The baby was on the counter. My mom was in the bed asleep. I woke my mom up and we calling you. That's all I know. I don't know nothing else. Don't okay, know okay, else. okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look, is the baby breathing? Listen, lady. The baby is deceased. The first two officers arrived a few minutes later and immediately entered the home. One officer made his way to the kitchen and quickly confirmed that baby Janiah was deceased. Simultaneously, the second officer located Deborah in the bathroom of the master bedroom. Officers on scene radioed for additional officers to assist. Amidst the chaos and confusion, a few officers cleared the home and, in the process, they located DeAsia. She was in the bed in her room, tucked under the covers, though her hair remained visible. Officers pulled the covers back, and DeAsia, without so much as a word, was handcuffed and moved to the hallway 
and remained under the watch of another responding officer. The rest of the home was cleared without incident. As Deborah's house had become a crime scene that would require thorough processing, the parties were moved to the criminal investigation section, known as CIS, at the local Cincinnati police station. It was there that everything began to unfold, but it would take some time to get to the horrendous truth hidden beneath a cluster of outrageous lies. Deborah's gut wrenching cries can be heard from the nearby room where Deasia is seated, waiting for detectives to enter. Yeah, she looked like a fucking mad woman. What is that? Term. <laughs> Super Saiyan, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, Deborah is beyond inconsolable. That for sure shows the difference. That that shows a lot. Says a lot. Yeah, right I don't there. think I can live through this. I don't think I can live through this. Oh God, I can't live through this. Oh no. Oh. More than two hours pass before detectives enter the room where a stoic Deasia remains seated. Hi. Hi, hey, Dee Dee. My name's Jen. This is Jake. Are you handcuffed? Would you be more comfortable if I took those off? Right away, Deasia sets the tone for the interview. She doesn't speak or respond to detectives. Keep her ass in there. Yeah, keep her ass in those handcuffs. What hand do you write with? You write or left handed? Are you right or left handed so I can uncuff the other hand? Just forget it. Jake's going to read something for you, okay? Just pay attention to him. All right. The detective reads Deasia her Miranda rights. Do you understand all that? Do you understand what I read to you? Or do you have any questions on it? But do you not want do you not want to talk to us? Dee Dee. You okay? Do you not want to talk to us at all? Pack her the fuck up. Pack her the fuck up. Pack her the fuck up. This troll looking at me. Pack her the fuck up. How do you spell your name? Spell your name. I can't help you if you don't talk to me. Okay? I want to make sure you get the help that you need, and I can't do that without even knowing who you are. All I know is you go by DD. So how do you spell your name? But Deasia refuses to sign off on the form to acknowledge that she has received and understands her rights. We're going to take some pictures of you, okay, and we're going to do some other clothes. I would like to sit down and talk with you and be able to see what you need that we can help you with, but I can't do that unless you talk back to me. Despite the detective's efforts to elicit a response from Deasia, they are unsuccessful. 
Shortly thereafter, a team arrives to handle photographs. I wonder what gets into the Stand up. Stand up. You have gloves on? Yeah. Go ahead and stand up. Let's uh, let's do some pictures right now. Just sure. need proper I'm right there. Drugs, man. That's what drugs do to you, man. Damn. Several minutes later, the photographs have been taken and DeAsia's clothing has been confiscated and retained as potential evidence. Did you drink any of your water? Upon re-entering the room, the detectives continue to run through the gamut of classic interrogation tactics, but each proves ineffective. Nearly six hours in, they've gotten nowhere with DeAsia, and the meeting comes to an end. After the unavailing attempt to gain information from DeAsia, she was transported to Deaconess Psychiatric Unit, where, yet again, she received treatment and was kept for observation. Three days later, she's back at the station, seated in front of detectives. And, as you're about to see, this interview is in stark contrast to the one that took place previously. The handcuffed? Yeah. Keep her on the meds. <laughs> That's why you don't avoid your medication, huh? Do you right left or right handed? Oh, right. Well, right handed? Yeah. And I'm going to read you a form here in a second. Okay, I'm going to ask you to sign it saying that I wrote it, that I read it off to you and that you understand what's not. Okay. Once again, the detective reads DeAsia her rights. This time around, she signs the form, acknowledging that she has received and understands her Miranda rights. After some general questions, the detectives begin to work toward untangling the terrible mess that led to an unthinkable tragedy. Um, so we're going to talk to you about stuff that happened the other day. What I'd like to do is just go back, okay, way before any of that. We talked to James a little bit. You know, how'd you guys become boyfriend-girlfriend? We just got to know each other. How long ago did you guys get that place together? Was that before you were pregnant or while you were pregnant? While I was pregnant. Was he working anywhere? Yes. Where did he work at? Hey, at some point, once you had the child, you guys went back to the house where you and James were staying together, right? So you guys went back there after after you left the hospital? Okay. Um, at some point in January, the police were called to that house there. Do you remember all that? No. You don't remember that very well? Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember after the police were called there? Like at that point, they had taken you up to the hospital then, had you evaluated, and then you were able to go back home. Do you remember all that? Well, at some point, after I talked to James, he said that you moved out of that place and went to stay with one of your aunts. W which aunt did you go to stay with? My aunt Debbie. Aunt Debbie? During Deborah's interview three days earlier, her sister Cindy assisted in answering questions posed by the detective and addressed this very topic. She called my sister one day about a couple of weeks ago, asked her if she could come and get her. My sister, she's sick, she can't see. My sister said, I can't drive. I shouldn't be driving because I'm sick right now. And she was crying so hard, like, please, ain't Debbie come and get me? And she went and got her. So she came, according to, according to James, she came and helped pack you up and help move your stuff over there? Yes. Okay, so you were staying there, like during why the stuff was going on at, with the court between you and the baby and James. Like, they're trying to establish yeah. him as the father. Why, why wasn't he on the birth certificate? Did you guys have some type of fight or? Yeah. No. No? His own ID had expired. He had an ID, but since it was expired, they said they couldn't do it. Okay. So he couldn't sign the birth certificate because of that? Yeah. Okay. Though James had expressed his fear that Janaya could potentially be taken from him due to this unfortunate issue, he'd failed to file for custody. The detective shifts to another important subject. When you went to stay with your aunt, were you taking medication then? Uh, yeah. Weren't taking any medication? Were you supposed to be taking some? Yeah. Or why, why didn't you want to take it? Is there? Just didn't? Okay. How long were you staying there before the baby came and stayed there? Two weeks. And then the court gave custody to your Aunt Debbie, right? Yes. While it appears that DeAsia is clearly under suspicion,
perhaps not everything is as it seems. I, I was down there talking to one lawyer. I come back and they don't talk to her into eating the baby. And my niece and them, they talk to her into getting the baby, hit her lawyer. And I was, I didn't know what was going on. I just said, we are all pitching in help because I work. And she's, she's retired. So I said, well, I'll, you know, pitch in. So I was like, no, we, want the baby. we don't want her to go into foster home. Cindy explained that her sister Deborah was hesitant to take on the responsibility of caring for Janaya. It seems she felt obligated to head the effort though she wasn't equipped to handle everything that came along with it. Maybe that had an impact on an extreme action she'd take in a matter of just a split second, one she'd come to desperately regret. She got the baby, and she was going on. Yes, she was supposed to be around. So, yeah. Did you ever ask me what we ate Before you ended up with the police, how long were you there with the baby? Um, eight. About eight days? Okay. So the, the night the police ended up getting called to the house, we had talked to your aunt, Debbie, and she said when she went to bed that she gave you the baby. She said her eye was hurting her real bad. She was trying to take her medication. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And she said she passed the baby off to you. Is that correct? Yes. And with this line of questioning, everything begins to shift in an unnerving direction. Um, the night after, the night when all this happened, the police came, and you had the baby in your room. Was the baby sleeping in a crib, in the bed with you, in the chair? What, where was the baby at? The crib. It was in a crib in your room? Yes. Uh, one of the things we saw in the bedroom was a broken lamp. Do you remember how the lamp got broken? No. Obviously, at some point, something bad happened with the baby. Okay. Do you remember what happened? No. How did the baby get into the kitchen? No. No. Do you think Aunt Debbie did something to the baby? Yes. You think it was Aunt Debbie? Yes. No. What do you think she did? No. The idea was unfathomable. But the alternative was even more unimaginable. Aside from Janaya, Deasia and Deborah were seemingly the only individuals in the home around the time that the terror ensued. Detectives had to explore the possibility that the combination of Deborah's own personal and medical issues, along with the responsibility of caring for a baby, had caused her to snap. Perhaps Deasia's reality had truly become a mother's worst nightmare and her own aunt had taken Janiah's life. I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak to someone, but I doubt it's her. But, dog, uh, it's her? You deserve a Grammy for this Oscar performance you're pulling off right now. But I, I, I feel like, I feel like she, she didn't do it. <laughs> this is killing me with my throat. How did she kill her? Stand her. She stand her? Yes. Do you know what she stabbed her with? The knife was next to The knife was next to the baby? Oh, the baby hand when I saw The what, I'm sorry? It was in the baby hand when I saw it. So you went out there and saw? No, no I had a scream. She hadn't seen the infant's lifeless body. She'd heard Robert's little girl's blood-curdling screams as the child entered the bloodied kitchen, and word of the grisly scene soon made its way through the home. But clearly, things weren't quite adding up. How do we make that leap from the babies acting like a normal baby to the point where we end up where it is badly injured and dies in the kitchen? That, I don't know. You don't know? I guess when I had was like popping. Okay. Here's, here's where we're going to take a little turn. That's not what happened. The detectives have come to this meeting armed with indisputable evidence. At, at what point during all this did you have the knife in your hand? Of course, the detectives already know the answer to this question. They just need to hear it from DeAsia. I didn't have the knife in my hand. You didn't, you never had the knife in your hand, so you, those aren't your fingerprints that are on, no. on the knife in there? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. So if, if we pull that up and you're... You hearing this you might as well confess you're clipped 
buddy? Fingerprints on that. Yeah. Like, how am I going to explain that then? They just stay on there? That's, you know what I'm saying? My fingerprints are not on there. No, but I'm, I'm telling you that they are. I'm saying, how do I explain that? By so checking it? By checking it? Why? We did check it. No, 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 all the blood and stuff that was all over you. Is she a blood no. too, bro? You don't know? No. Take a guess. How, what do you what do you think would be a good explanation? Um. At this point, the detectives are done entertaining DeAsia's absurd claims and denials. They employ some tactics that weren't successful last time around. Do you know the difference between a bad person versus a bad thing, like doing a bad thing. Do you understand the difference? Yes. So there are people out there who are bad, okay? But there are people out there who aren't bad, who sometimes do bad things. And there's a, there's a big difference in that. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we're trying to find out. Do you think something was just going on that may have caused you to do this? Yes. What, what do you think was going on? No, I'm just trying to take my baby. People were trying to take your baby from you and that upset you? Yes. Okay. Did that make you feel like if you did this to the baby, then nobody would take it away from you? I did nothing to the baby. You already confessed. <laughs> you already, you're clipped. <laughs> they already got you in a little trap, bro. But that don't make, that don't even make sense though. Like, that don't, that don't make sense. Like, you're saying yes, but that really don't make sense. But detectives aren't yet able to overcome DeAsia's denials as she continues to claim that she didn't cause Janiah's death. They continue at it and try a different approach. I don't think you wanted anything bad to happen to the baby. I don't, I don't think that at all. You wouldn't have kept trying to stay there and be around the baby if you wanted something bad to happen to it. But you would agree that something very bad happened. Okay, and the, ba the baby is no longer with us and the baby's dead. Okay. But the manner in which the baby died was caused by somebody with very deep feelings, very strong feelings. There was a lot of angst in what was done. Somebody had very strong feelings towards that baby. Okay. And the person I find with the strongest feelings one way or other about that baby is you. You're the person that had the strongest connection and what I'm trying to get to the bottom of what happened here, I think a big goal for the police is we want to know exactly what led up to this, what may have caused or what may have led you to react in such a way so that we can help somebody else from not doing it. If you could help another mother with the stuff that you were suffering from in the postpartum, wouldn't you want to do that? You know Aunt Debbie didn't do this. You don't want to blame it on Aunt Debbie. That's not going to help, okay? Do you think I'm getting a little close there with the fact that you just don't want to believe you did it? How do you... Yeah. So, when you think about Janaya, how do you feel now? I feel real sad. Real sad? sad. And disappointed. Why do you feel disappointed? Because I just lost I know, I really love and, and none of us in here doubt that you loved her. Okay? Just what just because of what happened happened, that doesn't that doesn't mean you didn't love her. I want you to tell me what made you upset that night. What started all this? What happens that makes you upset? Nothing. Nothing upset you. Yeah. The detective directly confronts DeAsia with more evidence. How did you end up 
with all this blood on you when the police get there? Um, you don't know? No. Well, how would you explain it? If you were if you were the police detectives, how would you explain you with all the blood all over you? Um, Why there's blood all over your room where you were sleeping? Um, Why your fingerprints are on the knife? I don't know. You don't know? No. What do you think we think when we see all that? The detective strategically transitions to the topic of DeAsia's loved ones, including James and her family, as he continues to build his case in hopes that something will trigger DeAsia to tell the truth. Do you do you still have feelings for James? No. Do you know, you know what James asked about you? What? So when I talked to James, he said to me, "Can I go see her?" Why you were at the deaconess? And I said, well, at this point, we're not letting anybody up there because people are concerned for your own safety from yourself. And they were monitoring you. And, and then Bill and I were concerned because we didn't want anybody else up there talking to you yet. But he asked a bunch of times, can I go see her? I think I'm the only one that can help her. I think I'm the only one that can get her to open up. I think she'll feel comfortable talking to me. I was impressed with James because given the circumstances of what has happened, I'm not too sure that I would be asking questions about you. He was upset about the knife, but he still was concerned about you. The rest of your family asked those same type of questions. Were you surprised to hear that James and your family was asking about you? Yes. Okay. And, and to be honest, I, I was surprised too. I thought they would be really, really mad at you. But do you know why they're not? Why? Yeah. Because they don't think you're a bad person either. They don't think you're a bad person. We don't think you're a bad person. But we do think that you're responsible for a bad thing. And I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat that or lie to you. And all the evidence and all the facts that we've, collect, that we've collected and investigated goes right along the same line. It all points to you being responsible. The detective explains that she needs to accept responsibility and deal with the consequences. And we need to move forward from that. Not just for the court stuff and for police stuff, but just for the family and everybody else. Aunt Debbie didn't do this sleepwalking, did she? No. No, she didn't. What set this off? What happened? I, want, I do want to help you, but I want to help the other people, too. The detective needs to uncover the spark that caused the massive explosion of violence. But Deasia reverts back to her original claim. People just she just sick, doesn't bro. know. The other detective chimes in. What do you we understand, do? Um, Jake's trying to tell you that we're, you're not here because if you did it. We, we, don't, we, we know that this happened, that you had, that you had a part in this, okay? that you did this, we're just trying to, he's trying to figure out, we're all trying to figure out what was going on, how or why this happened. We know Aunt Debbie didn't do it, and you know that too. At what point, once you got to the kitchen, what, what happened once you got there? This time, DeAsia provides a different answer, and it's unbelievable. I took that and I said it. With her admission, less than 40 minutes into the interview, the denials cease. The ugly truth has finally been exposed. But it seems there's likely more to how this all came about. You recall the incident where the police were dispatched to the apartment as a result of cries and screams coming from within that night in late January. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't the first foreboding episode that had occurred within those walls. James shared some disturbing details with the caseworker at that initial meeting, shortly after DeAsia had been taken off to the hospital for an evaluation. The beginning of 2015, which marked Janiah's first month, brought along with it some changes in DeAsia. According to James, she began speaking regularly about religion. While that in itself wasn't a cause for alarm, it was out of character for DeAsia. Her unsettling behavior included claims that demons were present.
crack. That's the cocaine. Please don't do drugs. Because you start, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think there was a video on this, like, something kind of similar like this. Like, someone had was doing drugs too. And they killed somebody just because of it. They called them demons. Same thing she's on, bro. Please don't do drugs. There were times she'd be fine Don't one moment hardcore, and uncontrollably man. crying the next. James had managed to capture the audio of one such occurrence as he clutched Janiyah in his arms, unsure of what else to do. He played the recording for the screener, and a hysterical Deasia could be heard screaming, Why God? Why me? What did I do wrong? Who are these demons? Please stop it. According to James, the incident, not unlike the one that occurred just hours earlier, was unprovoked and completely unexpected. That said, Deasia is now about to reveal her version of the slaying that ensued just days earlier, and she's poised to divulge every last nauseating detail. Please be advised that the following segment may be too graphic for some viewers. Uh, here we go. Deasia starts at the beginning. I took Janiya. So I changed my diaper. He kept screaming and running. And then I didn't get the changer. So I just threw it across the room. He didn't die. So I walked over there. I picked it up and banged the red and it looked so four times. And I figured she wasn't dying in. He clipped the little big old stick and hit her in the head four times. She wasn't dying fast enough. Mm. This one over in the kitchen to kill her and raise her off. Baby across from yes, bro. Threw the baby across the fucking room. Yo, that shit got me sad, bro. Yo, I can't imagine doing it. Can't do it, bro. Oh my god, this is fucked up. Take the knife on now. Stab her head. Tell her to die, die, die. Stab her eye. She still touch. It's cutting it. How many times did you cut to get her neck severed? Until they sliced off. So once you started stabbing her, what made you think you needed to cut her head off after that? She wouldn't die. She wouldn't die? How do you know she wasn't dead? Because she kept breathing and... She kept what? Breathing and moving around. She kept breathing and moving around? Yeah. Even after you were stabbing her? Yes. What did you do with the knife after that? Put it in her hand. Was there a reason that you did that? Yes. Why did you put it in her hand? So it would look like she did. So it would look like she Fucking dumbass bitch. Did it? What the fuck? Yes. And then what did you do? I went back over. Deasia's revolting account is consistent with the evidence found at the scene. What made you do that? I usually don't call women B-words, but she deserve it, man. She deserve it. Sorry, she. I'm bro. Fuck it. I'm not sorry, nigga. She deserve it. No. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing yeah. this shit. No. Do you regret what you did? Do you feel bad about what you did to Janiyah? Yeah. Why don't you feel bad? Just um, Do you blame Janiyah for something? No. Yeah. What made you want to kill her? Um, I don't know. Do you think you could have just given her to James instead? Yes. Can I get in contact with him? Couldn't get in contact with him? Yeah. How long before Robert showed up? A good 15. I'm sorry? A good 15. 15 minutes? Yes. Did you hear the little kids scream when they came in? They didn't even scream. The little girl said, the baby. So you, were, you heard all that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. After catching a glimpse of like baby Janiyah like, like in a, such like, an... Like it's a normal thing, yo, what the fuck? ...utterly brutalized state, Jesus Robert God. had to divert his eyes. What, what, what do you see when you look at the child? What do you... Look, this lady, I don't want to describe the scene, 
this experience is very, very bad. All right, the little lady, the little baby head is open, like okay. open, open. I'm not, I'm not going in there to touch nothing because I don't want to mess nothing up. I'm not going in there to look because I already seen it, but it's not. It's very violent. It's a very violent thing. Uh. But we're gonna step out for a minute, okay? Were you able to tell anyone else about this? No. Okay. We'll be back in a minute, okay? Okay. Would you like something to drink or anything? No. Water or something? No. Okay. They don't offer her shit. Detectives exit the room and don't return for any additional questioning. Less than 15 minutes later, DeAsia is headed for the Justice Center. DeAsia's account confirmed the Hamilton County Coroner's report. Baby Janaya had sustained stab wounds on both her face and head. All when right. the coroner was asked if she could provide that, the number of stab wounds, she stated that she'd lost count. Janaya's right arm was work. fractured. In addition, her head had indeed been severed from her body, as DeAsia so callously described. According to the Hamilton County prosecutor, Job and Family Services did their job. Nevertheless, the haunting case is one you likely can't wrap your head around, and the question of why really wasn't answered, at least not completely. DeAsia's initial plea in response to her aggravated murder charge was not guilty by reason of insanity, but the presiding judge ordered that she receive psychiatric treatment. It was later determined that she was competent to stand trial upon receiving the required treatment. However, a trial date never came. DeAsia Watkins pleaded guilty to the brutal murder of her own infant in February of 2017. She received a sentence of 15 years to life in prison with the possibility of parole at 13 years. Possibility. <laughs> Up that shit to like 25, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Up it to 25. As she was given credit for the time she'd already spent in custody. Due to the monetization policies of this platform, we had to make a lot of cuts and heavily censor the content of our videos. With an entire team behind the creation of each video and the cost of obtaining exclusive footage. Dog, imagine like editing this whole shit, bro. Oh my God, I'd be disgusted. Props to the editor, bro. You can't pay me enough money to edit this whole thing, man. This, uh, uh, I won't be able to, I won't be able to. Bro. We cannot afford to produce demonetized content. Therefore, if you would like to see less censored versions of our videos, and even more exclusive content, you can do so by joining our Patreon. <laughs> no, sir. You will I'm also good. be helping us continue to produce this content. Hello? I'm good, bro. Ah, W video, but oh, oh, that's a W, but an L video at the same time. Oh, that's a bad video to end on, bro.